Seeing no further introductions, it's now time for member statements. The member from Simcoe Gray. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, Stevenson Memorial Hospital in Alliston uh, requires provincial health care dollars so it can proceed with a redevelopment project that involves a new emergency department, operating rooms, diagnostic imaging, and laboratory. This hospital is in dire need of more room so it can continue to provide the top-notch health care that it is so well known for. As the population ages, the hospital, hospital's needs will only continue to grow. Just to give you an example of the pressures on the hospital, it was built in 1964 for just 7,000 emergency room visits each year, but today it experiences more than 33,000 visits and it hasn't grown by a single inch since 1964. Recently, I launched a petition calling on the government to make the appropriate dollars available, and I'm pleased to report that every day we collect more and more signatures. But we need to put more pressure on the government. So I asked people wanting to sign the petition, they can find a copy of it at my website at jimwilsonmpp.com. Now, as you know, Mr. Speaker, we need original signatures. We haven't quite gone to electronic petitions yet in the House, something we're debating. We need uh, original signatures, so I'd ask people to download and print off a copy of the petition at jimwilsonmpp.com and to uh, send it into uh, my office uh, at 180 Parsons Road in, uh, in Allison. I want to thank the uh, staff and the uh, hospital board for their role in getting the hospital ready for an expansion, and I hope the government uh, will listen to the people that signed the petition, and in particular the patients that need the services. Thank you. Mr. Further member statements, member from uh, Tell back James the regular Payton. programming. <laughs> What do you say after that? <laughs> I, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I rise uh, in order to raise an issue that I think uh, we're going to have to start figuring out how to deal with. For some years now, the Ministry of Natural Resources has lost the capacity to do most of what it used to do in not only northern Ontario but across this province. And one of the things that they used to do is that they used to do lake impact studies in order to determine is there crowd land that can be rightfully put for sale so that people can build cottages. It's no different than what we do when it comes to building subdivisions in all of our communities across this province. There's a planning process. You have to go according to the rules to determine if uh, the area is able to deal with uh, being able to uh, have those houses. Well, in a case of cottages, the MNR is the only uh, ministry that has the authority and the capacity to be able to determine if cottage lots can be developed on Crown land, on lakes uh, across this province. And unfortunately, for some now almost 30 years, uh, the government has not done any work when it comes to doing that because they don't have the cash to do it. As a result, people that want to build cottages are unable to do so because there's no land available. So you're left with option A, buying an existing cottage, which the price is fairly expensive, or buying somebody's old cottage, ripping it down and building a new one. So I would ask the government to look at putting in place a pilot project in order to deal with uh, trying to make cottage lots available in this province so that people can build that leisure world uh, that they all want. Thank you. To the member statements, the member from Brampton springs up. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today I stand to recognize the United Nations International Day of Democracy, which is usually on September the 15th of each year. This day, which has also inspired Democracy, democracy Week here in Canada, encourages the general public to learn more about the electoral process and be ready to cast their ballot by knowing when, where, and, and ways to register and vote. Democracy and specifically democratic governance makes certain that human rights and freedoms are respected and protected, and all and all are free from any discrimination based on race, ethnicity, class, gender, or any other attribute. Through democracy, people have a say in decisions that affect their lives and can hold decision makers accountable. Many of the benefits that we enjoy as a society today can be directly linked back to our solid democratic foundation and commitment to representative government. Mr. Speaker, throughout this week, students in classrooms across Ontario will have a chance to engage in civic education by learning about the issues that affect their communities. As many of us in this House know, a growing number of Ontarians, especially youth, are dis often disengaged from the democratic process. That is why I am encouraging all members of the House to inform youth in their writings of the Legislative Assembly of Ontario's Model Parliament program. The three-day program for students in grades 10 to 12 will select 107 students, one from each of the province's writings, to, ex to experience the legislature firsthand. Coinc coincidentally, the first day to submit applications also happened to be September the 15th. 
It's a perfect opportunity to get the conversation started with youth and encourage leaders of the future. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Green Energy Act continues to assail rural Ontario, especially in my riding of Halliburton, Quartha Lakes, Brock. We have fought for years against industrial wind turbines on the Oak Ridges Moraine. Residents and local councils stood firmly against them. A new monster is rearing its head. A large energy developers are now enticing municipalities by offering cash incentives, essentially bribes, for their support for massive industrial solar farms. It begs to ask the question, how much money are these companies making? While the temptation to accept these bribes can be overwhelming, I congratulate the City of Kortha Lakes for standing on principle and with its residents and saying no. They said no to all 10 proposals for solar farms within their borders. How can the government be okay with developers who stand to make a profit while hundreds of acres of agricultural land will be lost? Woodlands and wetlands, including habitat for species at risk, will be significantly affected. Environmental and health concerns still exist. Under the Municipal Act, it is illegal for a municipality to offer incentives such as tax breaks to attract a development or a business, yet the Liberals are essentially allowing the reverse to take place. With the increasing burdens that rural municipalities face under the Liberal government, Kathleen Wynne should outlaw this practice immediately. Here, here. Respect for rural Ontario is not a catchphrase, it is a commitment that is manifested in action. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, today I would like to say a few words about the secrets of Radar Museum in my riding of London Fanshawe. The museum's exhibits tell the often overlooked story of thousands of women and men who served in the radar during World War II as mechanics, operators, teachers, trainers, physicists, and researchers. Many of these early radar veterans went on to have leadership roles in the development of radar during the Cold War and in the Canadian electronics industry. They took oaths of secrecy for the, for the course of their service and beyond. For nearly 50 years, these men and women kept the truth from their families and friends, and many of them taking the secrets to their grave prior to the expiry of the Official Secrets Act in 1991. The museum opened in 2003 and is the only museum of its kind in Canada, making a unique addition to London's history and culture and contributing to tourism in the city. I am thrilled that this year, year, the Secrets of Radar Museum was selected to participate in the Community Exhibits Program here at Queen's Park, where the collection can be shared and appreciated by the community tour groups, staff to the Legislature, and my fellow MPPs. I would invite members of the Legislature to stop by the exhibit in the West Wing Gallery sometime between now and the conclusion of the exhibit in November. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Burlington. Speaker, I rise today to recognize the volunteers and donors who helped rebuild my community after the August 4, 2014 flood in Burlington. This week, I attended a special event hosted by the City of Burlington and our Community Foundation, where we watched a documentary on the Burlington flood, produced by Kojiko TV Halton. In it, we watched as creek beds overflowed and water rushed down our streets, into people's backyards and homes. Thousands were impacted, with close to $100 million in losses. This summer, residents in some of the hardest-hit areas told me the support of friends and neighbours was overwhelming. People brought food, did their neighbours laundry, and provided a listening ear and a shoulder to cry on. Guided by the remarkable Colleen Mulholland, CEO of our Community Foundation and under the leadership of Ron Foxcroft, Burlington Citizen of the Year, individuals and businesses in our community contributed an astounding $1 million to the flood relief fundraising efforts. These funds were matched two to one by our province, I'm proud to say, Speaker, and five volunteers of the Disaster Relief Committee then got to work processing 300 claims and overseeing the distribution of $2.7 million. The unity of our community's response was remarkable. Our mayor, our council, our city and regional staff who showed such dedication, compassion and care. Our first responders, our donors and hundreds of volunteers who gave of their time and talents pitching in when and where needed. Lessons learned helped shape two new provincial disaster relief programs that will make it easier and faster to get financial assistance following a natural disaster, and I'm proud of that, Speaker. A commemorative plaque will be installed in front of Burlington City Hall to mark this day, which we will never forget. And so while there were countless losses that day, Speaker, as a result of this terrible flood, I'm very proud of the response of my generous and caring community of Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. 
Member Stamos, the member from Leeds Grenville. Uh, thanks, Speaker. I'm disappointed that uh, in the past three years there have been serious allegations levied against several high ranking officials in the government of Ontario. As you're well aware, it was February 16, 2012, that Ontario provincial police officers first launched the formal investigation of Orange because of apparent financial irregularities. That was followed by an investigation initiated on June 7, 2013, as Liberal staffers were accused of destroying emails related to the cancellation of the two gas fired power plants. On January 15, 2015, I personally wrote to the Ontario Provincial Police asking that the case be reopened into the investigation of alleged bribery perpetrated by the Premier's office to dissuade a candidate from running. On February 19, 2015, Elections Ontario announced a, quote, unprecedented finding that Liberal operatives Jerry Lawhey Jr. and Pat Sorbera's actions were a, quote, apparent contravention of the Election Act. And now we are still waiting, and justice appears to be stalled. The Commissioner of the OPP has said he is frustrated with the progress of the case. Now, Speaker, I have no doubt the OPP has done a thorough job, but enough is enough. We all heard the tape. The people of Ontario have heard the tape. The people of Sudbury deserve justice, and the people of Ontario deserve their day in court. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise in the House today to acknowledge and celebrate the Canadian National Exhibition and its 137 years in Toronto. As this is the first week back in the Legislature, I believe it is important to highlight the excellent work that so many organizations, sponsors and volunteers did in the uh, 18 days uh, of CNE. The CNE is a fractionated and fractionally embraced as the end of summer retro by more than 1.4 million visitors annually, including those from lovely neighborhoods like Liberty Village, Fort York, and City Place. And I believe this year the CNE saw a significant increase in visitors from last year. But CNE provides more than just fun and games. It also provides huge job opportunities for students and countless hours of volunteer times for people of all ages. This year, at CNE had many exciting experiences. There was an amazing lineup for a celebrity chef to showcase their culinary skill, a citizenship ceremony where approximately 56 new Canadians from 18 different countries were sworn in. The 66th annual Canadian International Air Show that took the sky above Lake Ontario. And I enjoyed the fun of family outing with my kids, Matthew and Emma. The team at CNE did an excellent job this year, and I would like to commend everyone involved on a job well done. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Scarborough Lane, Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak about the upcoming Terry Fox Day in Ontario. On June the 3rd, 2015, the Ontario Legislature unanimously passed my private member's bill, the Terry Fox Day Act, to designate the second Sunday after Labor Day as Terry Fox Day. I want to thank all my colleagues for their support in passing Bill 61 in time for the 35th annual Terry Fox Run. As we mark the 35th annual Terry Fox Run, there will be numerous events and activities to honor Terry across Ontario. Last Saturday, I attended the unveiling of a bronze statue of Terry Fox in Richmond Hills, beautiful random park where Terry once ran through. Also in attendance was her honor, Elizabeth Doswell, the Premier, Minister Moretti, along with Terry's brother and sister, uh, Fred and Judith. I want to thank Richmond Hill resident, Glamina Battencourt, for her tireless work in preserving Terry's legacy. Mr. Speaker, to, thank, to mark the first official Terry Fox Day, I'll be hosting the celebratory event in my riding of Scarborough Asian Court this Saturday, September the 19th at Bridalwood Park to further raise awareness and to reflect on Terry's legacy. With the first official Terry Fox Day nearly upon us, I want to encourage every Ontarian to reflect on the contributions made by Terry Fox and to join in the 35th annual Terry Fox Run this Sunday, September the 20th. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. Now time for